In Vue 2023, we completely reworked the Material Editor. Now with the decoupled Material Editor, it is possible to access all properties via the Python API. This is very helpful for automation and for accessing material properties using Vue Core, for example. See also the Python documentation here. In the new Material Editor, it is now possible to select multiple materials at the same time and change values for the complete selection in one go. You can, for example, change the diffuse color for all selected materials. Or you can set an override for multiple materials. By the way, changing a value of multiple entities is also possible in the light editor since quite a while. We also have now a tree view available, similar to the scene graph, which gives you a faster and better overview of complex materials. If you want to expand the tree view, you can also use the new slider on the bottom. Additionally, we implemented a so-called breadcrumb navigation. You can see the submaterials and its parents organized in these tabs, which makes the navigation between the submaterials and its parents much easier now. And if I want to know where materials are used as submaterials, you can do a right-click, select all occurrences to show these. For cleaning up materials in the scene, we use the merge materials functionality. And now we can also choose how aggressive the merge should be. If you want to load, for example, multiple materials, such as x ride or substance materials, or multiple environments, you can now select multiple files within your Windows browser and do a bulk load. After loading a bunch of substance materials, I want to filter for them, and I can do that now using the new filter toggle, which I can turn on or off. This is very helpful if I need to use the same filter multiple times. And also the preview window can now follow the filter toggle, so I can easily toggle between all materials and only my substance materials, for example. Especially for the substance materials, we added also a new option. In Adobe Substance Designer, it is possible to capture only specific values in presets. And in the VRED Preferences, it is now possible to decide what happens with these uncaptured values when double-clicking them. So you can select between Apply and Reset and Apply and Merge. This gives you the possibility to combine different presets, like I can do here where I select a double or a single stitch and also select different color presets. And if I want to use another preset behavior, I will find these options also within the context menu doing a right click. When now assigning a material, you use the drag and drop functionality. Here's a little quick tip in case you didn't know. You can drag and drop a material with the middle mouse button to replace a material. Or you use the right mouse button to add a decal to a multipass material, for example. Or I can create a switch, also with multiple materials at the same time. And the number of selected materials are also indicated for a better overview. For regrouping or creating a new multipass or switch, you sometimes need the second material tree. And now when doing a selection in the viewport, only the active tree is jumping to the selection which is very helpful as it prevents you from scrolling around. A multi-selection works also now for saving out textures, so you can now select multiple or all materials and save out the textures in one go. If you are dealing with textures, you might also sometimes run into a texture tiling issue, like here where I can see the tiling on the floor material. This can be very tricky to resolve. But now we have a new option called Use Infinite Tiling. Just simply enable it, adjust the settings if needed and the tiling is gone. This can save you massive time and increases faster your visual quality. Additionally, we added 11 different shader geometries. Now you can set every single material to a more appropriate geometry. This also helps to identify materials better in the preview window, as you can set a fabric to a cloth geometry, for example, which is very helpful for getting a faster overview. It is also possible to add custom shapes by modifying the material ball VRED file that can be found here. I did for example a custom tire, rim and plastic part and added it into the file. And now with a new multi-selection option, you can also set multiple materials to a different shader geometry in one go. When dealing with environments, I can now use the new Manipulate button and manipulate the environment transformation directly in the viewport, which makes adjusting the environment much more intuitive. 
In case you have an HDRI with an underexposed light source, you can use the boost light function. This is also working now dynamically and you see the results directly in the viewport. We also did some changes for VR collaboration. In some situations the laser pointer appears too big as one user is very close to an object while another person points to that object. This can be very disturbing as the laser and pointer ball will cover a huge area and distract the view. But now you can set the thickness of the laser and the size of the pointer ball in relation to the object's distance within the preferences. And now the size always appears correctly without disturbing too much. Another improvement is done for GPU ray tracing. If you're using GPU ray tracing very often, you will be happy to hear that we are reducing the time to load and start GPU ray tracing massively. So loading scenes to start ray tracing takes now nearly half the time. See here a comparison of the old and new behavior side by side. This saves you so much time during your day and speeds up your workflow. By the way, here is a little quick tip in case you didn't know. You can start ray tracing by pressing F4 and switching back to OpenGL is F3. Thanks for watching the video.